guys hope you people are well today we are going to discuss about the science of dental materials we choose the topic investment materials in our video well what is investment material from the name of the topic we can understand investment means to deposit okay the material which is used for investing or covering a wax pattern to form a mold in the construction of a dental restoration or appliance is known as an investment materials. That means investment material is transformer material to transform wax pattern to mold. In this topic, we will focus on composition, function, classification, manipulation and properties of investment material. Now we will discuss about composition of investment materials. This material contains primarily 1. Refractory material, 2. Binder and 3. Modifiers. First of all, refractory materials. It is the form of silica mainly silicon dioxide. Forms may be quartz, tridimide, cristofoliate or the mixture of all. The amount of refractory materials is about 60 to 65 percent. It has some functions. 1. Increase setting expansion of stone. 2. Regulates thermal expansion. 3. Eliminates the contraction of gypsum and change it into an expansion during heating. Remember, refractory materials are related to expansion. Next, binder. We hear about dental stone, which is alpha calcium sulfate hemihydrate. The functions are 1. It binds and holds the silica particles together and by binding. 2. Gives strength to the mold. 3. Permits pouring of the mix into the mold. Look, here hemihydrate transforms into dihydrate in the presence of water. This dihydrate sets to form a solid mass which is the main setting reaction of investment material. Finally, modifiers. This can be 1. Boric acid, 2. Sodium chloride, 3 carbon, 4, copper powder, 5, coloring agent. Here, boric acid and sodium chloride modify chemical nature which regulate setting time and setting reaction. After that, carbon and copper powder. They are reducing agent. They reduce unwanted oxides formed on the metal by providing a non-oxidizing atmosphere in the mold. So, this was the discussion of composition of investment materials. This time, we are going to explain in classification of investment materials. Refractory material, which is silica, is same in all types of investment materials. On the basis of binder used, investment materials may classify into three types. 1. Gypsum bonded investment materials. 2 phosphate bonded investment materials and 3 silica bonded investment materials 1 gypsum bonded investment materials it is used for casting gold alloy they can withstand temperature up to 700 degrees celsius 2 phosphate bonded investment material it is used for metal ceramic and cobalt chromium alloy they can withstand higher temperature. And finally, 3. Silica bonded investment materials. It is used for casting of base metal alloy, partial denture. It is alternative to phosphate bonded and can withstand high temperature. Well, that's all about refractory materials. Now, we are going to focus on manipulation and setting reaction. They are supplied in bulk or pre-weighed bag. In manipulation, the measured quantity of powder and water is mixed manually using a flexible bowl and spatula 
or a vacuum investment materials. A blue rubber bowl and a plastic spatula are shown on the screen. During manipulation, the setting reaction occurs. It is same as mentioned in the reaction of binder. I am repeating, hemihydrate becomes dihydrate in the presence of water. According to ADA, American Dental Association, time is not less than 5 minutes and not more than 25 minutes. Modern inlay investment set in 9 to 18 minutes. Now we will focus on the ideal properties that we should follow during manipulation. 1. The mold should expand to compensate for shrinkage during cooling. I'm repeating again, expand to compensate. 2. The refractory material should not decompose at higher temperature, giving off gases. 3. The powder should have fine particle size and smooth consistency when mixed to give a smooth surface. 4. The manipulation should be easy and suitable setting time should be gained. 5. Material must be porous, enough to permit air to escape easily during casting which remain occluded in mold cavity. 6. Casting temperature should not be critical. 7. It should break readily from the surface after casting by not causing any chemical reaction. And finally, number 8. It should be economical. By this time, we learned about related topics of refractory materials. This instant, we will discuss about gypsum bonded material. According to ADA, gypsum bonded materials are two types, type 1 and type 2. Questions may arise in your mind that what are the uses of gypsum bonded materials? Type 1 is for casting of inlays or crowns and type 2 is for casting partial denture bases. Also fixed and removable partial denture framework using gold alloy and other low fusing alloys and also used as investment materials for investment soldering. The points to be noted, it has some limitations. They can be heated above 700 degrees Celsius temperature. But why the gypsum bonded materials should not be heated above 700 degrees Celsius temperature? This term is very important for professional examination. Because if the temperature is between 200 degrees Celsius temperature to 400 degrees Celsius temperature, gypsum bonded materials shrink considerably. Again, slight expansion does happen between 400 degrees Celsius temperature to 700 degrees Celsius temperature. Then a large contraction occurs. The later shrinkage is caused by decomposition and release of sulfur dioxide, which causes not only decomposition but also contamination, the casting by sulfur dioxide fusing with silver and copper. There is some factors affecting hygroscopic setting expansion of gypsum bonded investment materials. This topic is also important for professional examination. What are the factors? Factors are composition, water powder ratio, temperature, effect of time of immersion, spatulation, effect of shelf life, the investment, confinement and finally effect of the amount of added water. Thank you.